face our responsibilities squarely and persevere at the unending task of setting and keeping the nation's affairs in order. In this vein, Madam Speaker, this UPP administration has kept and will continue to keep the nation's affairs in order. We will deliver to the people of Antigua and Barbuda a new economy where the benefits of prosperity will be the sweet harvest sprung from the seeds of sacrifice hitherto made by our people. Madam Speaker, in this land of sun, sea and sand, it's morning, it's morning, it's morning. I thank you, Madam Speaker, and I commend Budget 2014 to the honorable members of this House and ask that they endorse the proposals presented therein. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I beg to second that motion and reserve the right to speak. Thank you, sir. Acknowledge the member for St. John City East. Madam Speaker, first I wish to thank everyone for their attention. I wish to thank the members of the other side for their considerable support. <laughs> and And Madam Speaker, I now move the adjournment of this Honorable House until Monday at 9.30 a.m. when we, sorry? Yes, when we will commence the debate in this Honorable House. Monday at 9.30, Madam Speaker. All, I also want to say, Madam Speaker, that the full presentation is available online to anyone who wishes to see the full presentation. This was an abridged um, version. And in the presentation and all the estimates are available for all members of parliament. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I'd like to second that motion. It has been moved and seconded that this Honorable House be adjourned until Monday, 27th of January at 9.30 a.m. Honorable Members, 9.30 a.m. Those in favor say aye. Those again say no. I think the ayes have it. This Honorable House stands adjourned until Monday, 27th January. Well, of course, we had the 2014 budget presentation by the Minister of Finance and the Economy, the Honorable Harold. We're going to have a chance to speak with some of the parliamentarians on their impressions of the budget presentation here in the House of Parliament. We have a number of people here, Sean. I'm, I'm first time on the floor this morning. I'm seeing a number of students from the Otis Comprehensive, also State College, they're here out in their numbers. Yes, indeed. The gallery is filled still. Uh, persons are making their way out now. And I'm sure, Mr. Prime Minister, I'm going to ask you to turn to this camera here as we just review or to look back at your reflections on today's presentation. I see you've got a big smile. Ah, yes, absolutely. I think um, the budget 2014 speaks to reality. It speaks to where we're going and we have laid out a clear, clear path as to what we need to do in Antigua and Barbuda. I'm very pleased with the presentation. I believe that it is doable. It has nothing to do with elections. Elections are coming, yes, but we have laid out a clear 
plan of action, the vision we have for Antigua and Barbuda, what we intend to do in the immediate term, in the future for Antigua and Barbuda, beyond 2014. This, this budget is not about 2014 and a general election. Mr. Prime Minister, the figure, um, are uh -huh. you satisfied that this figure will take the country where we'd like it to go? You mean the budgetary proposal in terms of dollars yes. and cents? Absolutely. But it's not so much what is stated in terms of the figures. It is what we intend to do to bolster the economic activity in the country and to set Antigua and Barbuda on the right path. I mean, clearly, I mean, that has been laid out and we, we are being very um, objective in our, our view and whatever has been said is not pie in the sky. These are things that have been well thought out and we know what we're doing. We know we want to take Antigua and Barbuda. And as we have been saying, there's no turning back. We're moving forward. Just really quickly, I'm going to ask you to make a response to two, two, two areas that having to do with area in terms of disabilities, persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. Never before has government looked at this in such a critical way. And the number of properties for development under the business incentives are planned. Uh, well, well, of course, we've been doing a number of things for, for, for people with disabilities in Antigua and Barbuda over the years. What we're saying is that we have to move beyond that now and, and deal with certain things more directly as it relates to people with disabilities. For example, the ratification and implementation of the UN Convention on you know, people with disabilities. We are saying that we need to work on that and make sure that we put all the necessary mechanisms in place to ensure that uh, these individuals are not marginalized in our society. Certainly. Thanks a lot, Prime Minister. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. That was Minister, that's Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, Dr. General Baldwin Spencer, speaking with me just moments ago after the presentation the of the financial uh, statement for Antigua and Barbuda Brown, 2014 and beyond. Member Parliament and I'm for City West. Mr. Brown. Your, your impression, we just had a, a two hours plus presentation from the Minister of uh, Finance, the Honorable yeah. Harold Lovell. Your impression of the 2014 budget presentation? Well, the first statement I want to make is that it is well known that Prime Minister Spencer and the UPP wrecked this country and they ain't coming back. There's no way that they're going back in the government. But in any event, um, today's presentation was really partially a clown show, just a lot of humor coming from uh, Minister Lovell. And uh, when you look at the substance of the budget, the number of plagiarized initiatives of the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party, in fact, the very theme of the budget about a new economy, uh, that is a theme that was used many years ago by our late father of the nation, Sylvia Cornwall Bird Sr., about building a new economy. It is something that we adopted recently and which obviously now has been stolen by the UPP. But in any event, uh, when you look at the projected growth, of about 1.9 percent. That is nominal growth. And if they truly believed that all of these tourism projects, all of these investments would materialize, then clearly they would be projecting probably about 6, 7, 8 percent growth. So their very projection of a paltry 1.9 percent would have contradicted any possibility of these projects materializing under their tenure. What I can say though is that we have a number of projects already in the pipe. We have signed a number of memorandum of understanding with various investors. And I can say to you that when we would have, would have reassumed the governance of this country come the next general elections in perhaps maybe two or three months maximum, I'll guarantee you that we will definitely increase the rate of growth. We'll grow this country's economy sustainably by at least 5% annually. And by so doing, we'll be able to increase government's revenues and put Antiguans and Barbudans back to work. I mean, notwithstanding all of the rhetoric, the Minister of Finance did not say how he's going to create additional jobs to put the 10,000 people who lost their jobs between 2008 uh, and, uh, let's say, to date, back to work. Again, you've got to grow the economy in a robust manner in order to put these people back to work. I mean, they argue that they have not retrenched, but there has been an in involuntary retrenchment taking place in the private sector for the last five years to the extent that 10,000 people were put out of work. They have not come up with any tangible way in order to resolve that issue. He spoke about the issue of personal income tax, in which they are now thinking about reducing personal income tax by about 20%. Now, I think that in itself 
contradicts their own argument against elimination of personal income tax. Because by reducing it by 20%, I think they themselves are admitting that personal income tax is economically destructive and they're seeking to reduce it. Uh, we have taken a position that at the end of the day, you will not lose the revenue, that it is economically destructive because when you tax savings and investments, you are literally reducing or eliminating the ingredients that will spur or encourage robust economic growth and development. Would, would, and you, say, would you say that the reduction in the income tax um, from, from 3,000 to 3,005, from 3,005 to, to, to 15,000, is, is, is not a measure to maybe put an ease on the pocket of, 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 of the people? But I'm, I'm making the very point that they are contradicting their argument. So I'm saying by suggesting that they needed to create some ease and to stimulate the economy, it reinforces our argument that you should reduce, you should eliminate personal income tax in its entirety because what you're doing there is that you're increasing disposable income so that um, uh, personal individuals will be able to spend more and you will tax the economic activity indirectly. So it's not that you're not going to recover the revenues. Uh, so I think that the very initiative that they have embarked upon to reduce personal income tax in its sense is an admission that we were right and that they were wrong. But in any event, they will not be in government, and we have already given the people of Antigua and Barbuda that we will eliminate personal income tax in its entirety. Uh, we do not need to get into no long-winded explanation about this issue. The elimination of personal income tax is a settled issue. We have done it over 28 years. And in addition, in addition when you also look at the performance of other countries like uh, the Bahamas and St. Kitts, who have outperformed us, uh, now that we have personal income tax, we can easily conclude that there is no need for any big debate on this issue. It will be done. And we will restore peace and prosperity to Antigua and Barbuda. No. The, other, the other issue I want to, to make here too that even if there were to be robust growth, and develop, robust growth under the UPP, they have not been able to support any meaningful development in this country. We have seen a phenomenon in 2007 when we had Cricket World Cup and the country's economy ostensibly grew by about 12%. We saw a situation in which poverty levels actually increased to almost 20%. And just to give you the facts, um, uh, there was a report done by Kariri funded by the Caribbean Development Bank, in which they inc indicated in that report that poverty levels as at the end of 2007 in this country were at about 19, 20%. So it's wanting to grow the economy, but can they translate that into overall development in uplifting the people? And that is where the Labour Party will have the competence as well to ensure that we ensure that the wealth in this country is probably distributed so that we can uplift all the people and obviously to put the people back to work and to uh, eliminate um, or reduce poverty. Now, what, what you say to the, the presentation that 2014 will be the year of economic activity and job growth, they're mentioning some of the projects, the Rendezvous, Emerald Cove, the completion of the Hutchins Bay Club. In fact, if those projects come on stream, a lot of jobs will be out there for, for Antiguans and Barbudans. You were here last year, and the same projects were presented as potential projects, Azure Bay, Rendezvous Bay. Uh, you also had um, the one at Hodges Bay Club as well. They, these are like recurring decimals and um, again all we'd have heard about are a number of unfulfilled projects and promises which clearly they're trying to dupe the people into believing that this year will be a great year. I have no doubt that 2014 will be a great year, but a great year on the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party. Thank you very much, Leader of the Opposition. Thank you very much. Cheers. Sean? I'm going to now speak with former Prime Minister and former Leader of the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party, the Honourable Lester Bird. How are you doing, sir? Not bad at all. What are your impressions after today's presentation? We heard about a reduction in income tax. We heard about new projects to come and stream for national development. Uh, your, your ideas? Well, the reality is that um, a lot of what was said today was done several years ago on the VC bird. The whole question of a new economy. We transformed the economy. We went out and we got um, increase in investment. But the real thing is, all these things have been there for the last nine years, and particularly for the last four years. What happened? How come all of a sudden with election imminent that all these things are going to be available to be developed? The reality is, who are these people who are going to develop it? Which banks are going to come and finance it? It's all very well and good for him to be very good rhetorically in pushing the notion that they are ready now to develop. What about Half Moon Bay? What about the other project? What about um, Kelowna Beach? They, they, how come they weren't able to talk to that? 
So what I'm saying is, what he's saying is almost boilerplate stuff for any island, whether it's St. Kitts, whether it's Antigua, whether it's thing, to develop the country. Inward flow of funding, tourism, and major construct to deal with it. That is clear. That is evident. So he built the whole speech around that. You understand what I'm saying? But it doesn't necessarily mean that the execution will take place. And we are saying that the Labour Party has the capacity that after 28 years, we have the capacity to, in fact, execute what needs to be done. In your, you, in your view, you thought you had a better hold on economy than the ruling administration does now? Absolutely. That is fundamentally and quintessentially what I'm saying, is that the Labour Party has a better grasp on how, in fact, to execute these things and to bring them forward. I mean, Butch Stewart's program, which they're making so much about, of course, Butch Stewart w was in agreement if we made the necessary concessions that he wanted. We did it, and he built sandals. He's now building uh, uh, up at um, Long Bay. But that doesn't mean necessarily that that is going to provide the kind of jobs. And based upon the job that they're talking about, you're going to have to import labor. You go back and check all these fantastic programs that they're talking about. You're going to have to go and bring labor, but they're not going to bring labor because the reality is we have a problem immigration-wise in that area anyhow. So that's not going to happen. But I do believe that 1% um, growth is not enough. When you go back three, four years, it's a negative growth in the economy. The world now is moving towards ICTs to transform economies and improve the livelihoods of people. What are your views on this? And, and of course, the ruling party is going in this direction as well. I want to, to pay a lot of credit to Mansour, who has done a fantastic job of trying to get the ICT embedded into this economy. And so from that standpoint, I have no criticism whatsoever, and the Labour Party will, will build upon that and make sure that whatever is necessary and whatever can be done for that, we would want to put our economy on that kind of footing again. So we're, we're not against everything. We're not against the, the feeding program for the, for the people. That we, we agree with that. What we're saying is, where are they going to get the funding to be able to do that? They don't have the funding to be able to do that. We're saying it because an election is imminent. What we're saying is what we're going to lay out in our manifesto with specificity exactly who the developer and where the funding is going to come from to do it. When it comes to the question of the personal income tax, please give me an aspirin. We did it for 28 years. Why? How come? You're a young, intelligent person. How soon are you be hoping to see a, a manifesto from your, your party? Well, I'm trying to encourage my, my, my party to put out an early manifesto so that you and all the journalists will have an opportunity to really go forward and question us and make sure that we don't just come with pie in the sky because that is not what I want to be involved in. I spent all my life um, developing Antigua and Barbuda and I want to deal with specificity so that I can show the people of Antigua and Barbuda that the time has come again for the Labour Party to take over the government. Finally, your manifesto is not out yet, but if you were to list top five things in terms of critical importance for national development in your manifesto. Jobs, 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 jobs. you got to show how you're going to relieve the poverty. The second thing is education with young people. If, if we don't get that going, I was quite impressed with the program they had on television with the young people. Those two. And of course, for me, quintessentially, tourism. The problem without tourism is that we have a tourism fatigue. We have the same old tourism methodologies. We got to have some creativity. We have to have, and we have to increase the maximum number of rooms and make sure that when you're building these rooms, you're building something new, like Bora Bora and those places in the Pacific, where you have to provide the, the with more than sun, sand, and sea. So that's three things that you got to get together right. I just said the ICT, that has to be uh, a fundamental part of it. And so um, we, we really have the capacity within our hands. So I want to tell you this. If there's one thing he's right about, we do have the capacity to be able to develop Antigua and Barbuda. But not just for saying it rhetorically because he wants to win an election. And we are saying that we are the ones who have the notion. You know, when, when we said no personal income tax back in 1976, I can remember Sidney Christian and the others walking into the court, no taxes, what asses. That was the slogan then. But the reality is, 
I went to the Bahamas in 1959, 1960. They have no personal income tax. I went to Bermuda, no personal income tax. I went to the BVI and I did an analysis. And then I came back. VC Bird did not agree immediately to do it. But we were able to bring somebody and show him how we should give a fillip to the economy and allow the people to have a trickle down effect and therefore spread it across. So that's, that's very, very important to make sure that we move the economy forward. Thank you so much, Mr. Bird. All the best to you in the upcoming elections and beyond. Thank you very much. Of course, I was the leader, former leader of the opposition, the Honorable Mr. Bird, speaking there with Sean Thomas. Well, Sean, a very eventful morning as we had the presentation of the 2014 the budget debate. Some very uh, uh, interesting comments there from the leader of the opposition, of course, uh, the Honorable Lester Bird. Uh, looking forward to the debate starting on Monday. On Monday, certainly, and we're looking forward to hearing exactly what the opposition has to put forward in terms of their way, in terms of leading the economy so that we can build on the economic fortunes that we've had in the past in terms of job creation, ICTs, and all the areas that, that, that are required for us to take Antigua and Barbuda towards this new economy that we're talking about. Of course, the leader of the opposition uh, has spoken to that as well, mm -hmm. income tax and all the issues. But let's look forward to that as, as we get set for the, the debate. The debate will, will go into, depth into the details of, of, that's of when the it, budget. Things will become more interesting. That's right. And like I predicted, once the throne speech and budget speech gets out the way, the mm -hmm. atmosphere in Antigua it's gonna will change. certainly change <laughs> as we prepare for elections that's in right. the early half of this. So thank you very much for joining us on our broadcast today for uh, the budget presentation 2014 on behalf of the entire outside broadcast team. On behalf of Sean Thomas, I'm Alex Nicholas. We're turning you back to Master Control.